Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go through capturing Opal on camera with a really old smartphone. So this is a Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge that I bought in 2016 from memory. So it's quite an old phone. If you've got a more modern phone, this will all still apply and in fact you'll probably get better quality images. And today we're going to focus on artificial lighting. So we'll start with the light. This is an LED panel. It's got a CRI of 96 plus and I, it's a bicolor so I can set it anywhere from 3200 to 5600 Kelvin. I typically have it at about 5500. And if those numbers make no sense, then feel free to visit my other video where I go through a lot of these kind of specs and why they're so important. But for now, this is, this is the gear that we're going to use. Okay, so here we are. I've just opened up the phone app. This is what it looks like. So we're fully at the mercy of the phone's intelligence here. So it's all auto, auto focus, auto white balance, auto everything. So you can see here that it can get good results. I always recommend zooming in before doing anything else. Zooming in will actually really get some good, decent results. Now this stone that I'm testing is one of my favorites because it's got this interchangeable face between this blue green and the red so you can really test out test out the CRI of lighting with this I've always used this to test lighting at shops it's probably a bit weird to take an opal in and test some lighting but I've done it many times now and they haven't really looked at me too weird so I highly recommend it if you've got the perfect stone for it like this one otherwise of course I've got these ones that I'll provide links in the description and all that kind of stuff so this is it in auto. Auto is great most of the time. Sometimes it can really struggle. If you've got a complicated background, so if I move this white piece of paper out of the way, you can see here it's not quite focusing on the face as well as it did with the white background. You can see that it's picking out the grains of the wood rather than the face, and even when you tap on the face, it just doesn't get clean and crisp. The other issue you can have is when you've actually got a dark background. So in this case, this is just a bit of sandpaper working with it currently. Look at what it's doing to the face of the opal here. So this is a result of white balance issues. So it's white balancing and all it's got to go on is that dark background and it's literally trying to brighten up everything. So you get this washed out, washed out look in your videos and photos. And I see this all the time on Facebook. This is probably one of the most common issues. Now, I'll just give you a sneaky little tip to try to avoid this. If you're taking a photo, what you can do is just include a little bit of a white white surface within the photo and it will actually white balance it out a lot better. So what I've seen in the past is people put white all around it, but then you just crop the image down to where that edge is and it will actually help a lot in terms of getting a good good photo doesn't help so much in video because you can see that there's this weird black and white thing. But it is definitely something to check out and try. You'll be really... Sometimes the results are really funny. So, you can see here that the auto, it does a great job on a simple white background a lot of the time. It remains fairly well focused and a lot of the other settings don't go haywire. But you can see in some cases when you've got complex backgrounds or black backgrounds that they go really, really mental. So what we're going to do next is transition over to the manual side of the camera. Alright, now here we are. We're in the pro settings. Now I can find this on my phone quite easily just by swiping across. See, I've got the auto and pro. So we're now in the pro mode. And it literally just means that we've got these options along the side here that allow me to change a whole bunch of things. Now... We've talked about these in the previous video. So ISO, we're gonna to try to keep that as low as possible, as low as our light lets us. So we're not gonna change that for now. What we can change is this. So this is the shutter speed of the phone. Now shutter speed's a bit of an old term, but you can think of this as how much light it's letting through. In motion shots, in moving kind of photos then it becomes a lot more important but in our case when we've just got a stationary opal and we're just trying to take a photo of it we can set this first and just make sure that we've got enough light but of course we don't want too much light so it's just controlling how much light is getting recorded so too dark too light somewhere in between 
that looks about right for the table. So that's pretty good. Now I've got some filters and stuff. Ignore filters, that's garbage. Uh, white balance here. You can leave this on auto for most phones. The sensors actually pick up the light balance pretty well, but if you really want to dial it in, you can just go to this one. So this allows you to set your temperature and you can really tune it in. If you know, if you know the exact temperature of your light, you can just dial it in here and avoid it looking too warm or too cool. This just compensates for it. But you can see here that the auto does a really good job. And then the last one is manual focus. I urge people to start using manual focus. It is so good when you've got a complex background because you can avoid the whole the whole focusing on that wood or the texture behind or whatever's behind the opal. That background scene we don't care about. We just care about the face of the opal. So you can see here, blurry, blurry, it'll sharpen and then it'll start getting blurry again. And you just want to pick that point where it's nice and sharp on the opal. Now, this isn't looking great just because I'm taking a video recording of a camera screen, which is making it really difficult, I'm finding. And the sliders are not that, not that conducive to fine tuning on mobiles. But all in all, you can see the idea. This is just really good because you can lock it in and then the only time you'll have problems if you're moving your camera closer or further away from the opal face. So once you get it dialed in, you don't want to move it too much, like there. So you don't want to move it much anymore. So I recommend using a tripod, but at least that way, even if you've got a really weird background behind you, you can make sure that you're always focused on this and it's not just going to focus on the background. A lot of people taking pictures outside have this issue, but inside artificial lighting it's a lot easier and you can get a much nicer, much nicer crisper face shot of the opal rather than the stuff around it. It becomes more prevalent when you start moving further away. So here we can, I need three hands, but we can make sure that we're focused on the face and you can see that the background is blurry no matter what. So. You can always keep the eye on the opal, which is really good. But yeah, that's a very basic quick look at artificial light use and opal photography or videography. And yeah, hopefully that's helped a lot of people. It's, it's, a, bit, it's a bit to go through and a lot of you will probably just stick to using the auto. It can do a good job if you've provided the right light and the right conditions. So stability is another huge thing, which is impossible in the way that I'm doing it now. You should see how awkward this is for me. If I zoom out, this is how I'm holding my phone. This is how I'm tweaking the opal. It's a, it's a terrible, terrible way to go. But it gets the point across, I hope. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. All links will be in the description and pinned comment if you want to track down some useful useful equipment including lighting and I might even find some good good other bits and pieces so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video